Hi, this video is going to be about the three families or types of rocks. As we uh, left off in the other video, there's igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Please know all the words in bold, what they mean, and how to describe them. Uh, we're going to be having labs on this as well to see the actual examples of rocks. But think about what texture each rock has and how the mineral grain size affects texture. Igneous rocks. They form from magma that crystallizes, which means the magma or lava cools and forms mineral crystals. Sometimes you can see those crystals because they're big, other times you cannot. Okay, the word igneous comes from ig, meaning fire or hot, like to ignite something. There are two subgroups. One is extrusive, and that's magma that cools on the surface. Very, very, very small crystals. The other is intrusive. Magma that cools slowly under the insulated earth. You're going to get big crystals. There are examples of each. You'll have to know the examples as we go through the lab and for the test. You can always stop anytime and write stuff down. The next group is sedimentary. Of course, these are formed by weathering, then erosion, then deposition of the sediments, then gravity CNCs, compacts and cements the sediments together. Another way these can form, of course, is by evaporation of a solution um, because there are some minerals that are classified as sedimentary rocks. There are three subfamilies or groups. Clastic, very, very common, probably the most common, and that's when rock um, fragment, fragments or sediments are actually cemented or stuck together. Uh, then, then we have chemical rocks, very similar to some of our minerals, Evaporated water leaving behind rocks or minerals, um, usually from a precipitate of a solution. And lastly are the organic sedimentaries, which are unique because they were rocks that were formed from things that were once alive. The last family of rocks are metamorphic. Meta meaning a lot and morph meaning changes. These are rocks that have undergone a lot of changes. The change happens to their structure and appearance caused by recrystallization or metamorphism. Basically, it's the rocks are heated and pressurized or cooked and smushed, you may also hear, um, so that the crystals rearrange themselves and change. There are two groups of metamorphic uh, rocks. One are foliated, and that's where the crystals or grains end up looking fairly parallel or in parallel bands or stripes. And then non-foliated, and these are tricky. They were in the grain sizes, seem to be similar in size. The crystals may look wet or glossy, like wet salt or sugar. Um, these are, as kind of the crystals are starting to re-melt or cook and smush and break up and change all crazy-like. And that pretty much sums up our overview of the three families of rocks and the subgroups within each rock. Don't forget, you need to know the families, how they form, the subgroups, how they form, and lastly, examples. We'll be doing the examples in class. Have a great one. Hey, welcome back to another great rock video. This one is our final video, the rock cycle. This is putting everything together. How one type of rock can change and become something different. Of course, all rocks can become other rocks over long periods of time or disappear from being rocks and become magma or just sediments. Think about why no rock on earth has been around for 4.6 billion years. Think about it. It's important. We may share that. And the point of this is to know how rocks form and change into a new rock, a sediment, or magma. How things move through the cycle because rocks are slowly recycled. Uh, this is a little video I made. Or not video, I guess a uh, picture thing. And you could take any spot. What I recommend doing is taking the three rock groups. So write down igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And then the two other places rock particles can be. Well, eventually you can turn rocks into sediment, small, microscopic, um, up to seeable pieces of rock that have been eroded, or magma slash lava. When you take a rock, heat it up till the crystals melt, it becomes magma. Take any starting point and figure out what are the things you can do to that rock. So here's an example. Igneous rocks. We can either weather and erode them into a sediment. We can always melt them into magma, or we could always add heat and pressure and recrystallize them into metamorphic rocks. That's the only thing you can do to an igneous rock to change it from an igneous rock. 
And then think about the in arrows. How do igneous rocks form? All igneous rocks form from magma that cools and crystallizes into an igneous rock. And now you're done with igneous rock. Choose another rock group. How about sedimentary? Think of all the things you can do to a sedimentary rock so it won't be a sedimentary rock. You can weather and erode it into sediments. You can recrystallize it with heat and pressure into metamorphic, or you can always melt it back into magma. Then think about in arrows. How do sedimentary rocks form? There's only one way. It's sediment that compacts and cement into sedimentary rock. Technically, that sediment could be an organic material or it could be inorganic. And technically, there is a third way, and that's some of the unique minerals that are also classified as sedimentary rocks uh, that are precipitates from a solution, such as halite. But that's not on our picture here. You can always add it. Let's look at the third rock group, metamorphic rocks. How do you change a metamorphic rock? Well, you can always melt it into magma. You could always weather and erode it into sediment. And the fun one, you could always use heat and pressure to recrystallize it into a new and different metamorphic rock. And that pretty much sums up the beautiful rock cycle. Of course, there are other ideas. You can always go on the internet and find different ones. You know, some are definitely more or less complicated than others, but almost all of them will use similar verbiage to what we've learned. The key for the test and for understanding for this whole unit is can you basically create a rock cycle on your own? Can you think of the three rock groups, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic? And for each rock group, can you come up with how it forms, the arrows going into that group, and how you can destroy a rock in that group, the arrows leaving. The arrows are processes. The rock groups and magma and sediment are areas where the material can hang out for a while. I know this was a long video, probably the longest. You can always go back and forth and check stuff out. I hope you're doing great. And remember, rock on. This is Mr. Gilbert signing out. Rocks.